If we want to, it's completely optional. We can write down um, some information about our departure airport and our destination airport. You don't have to, but some people like to. So we have to go to the chart supplement book and we'll find the airports. The states are alphabetical, so we need to find South Carolina. And then we'd find Greenville. We can fill in this information. So the airport diagram, I can sketch it out if I want to. So we have a north-south runway and an east-west runway. We have runway 1, 1, 9, runway 2, 8, runway 10. We can write in the field elevation if we want to, which is 10, 48. Traffic pattern altitude, so there's a note in here. It says traffic pattern altitude, see remarks. And down here, if we read through this, it's going to show us that it's actually an 800-foot pattern instead of a 1,000-foot pattern. So traffic pattern altitude is going to be 1,800. And then the weather frequency, we can write these down. Um, there's no clearance delivery frequency here at Greenville. The weather, if we look at the ATIS, and we could pull that off of here or off the sectional chart. It's in both places for us. So the ATIS is on 127.07. Now there is a 5 behind it, but most of our radios in the general aviation airplane, airplanes don't have the third place decimal. So Usually we just kind of ignore that. And the ground control is on 121.5, or correction, 0.25. And then the tower frequency is 119.9. And the flight service station frequency, so they're listed in the book. They're also, they may also be listed on the sectional chart. So I want to point this out. Um, in our area, you look for the nearest VOR and see if there is a frequency for the flight service station. So I see Anderson, or Anderson Flight Service Station on 122.1 with an R beside it. But I also see an additional box right here that I could use because it's closer. They call this an RCO. So this is Greer RCO which means remote communication outlet. They're just saying that there's another um, frequency available in our area that we can use. So we could call up Anderson Radio on 122.65, or we could try them from this other VOR, freq uh, other frequency that's on the Spartanburg VOR. But this one's closer, so I would be apt to try that one first. So 2265 is what we want to write down. And then we have um, approach and departure frequencies. So down here, you'll notice that Greer approach slash departure, we call them departure if we're leaving the area. We call them approach if we're arriving or passing through the area. But they give you the frequency of 118.8. .8. The CTAF, we don't really need that, um, but it is the same as the tower if the tower were closed. And Flight Watch, that's on this particular form, uh, they did away with that a couple years ago, so Flight Watch no longer exists. And then we can go to the Columbia Airport and do the same thing. So here's Columbia. We have uh, runway 11 and 29. Then we have runway 5 and 23. The airport elevation is 236. The traffic pattern. Uh, looks like it's a normal traffic pattern. I don't see anything that tells us to look down in the remarks. So traffic pattern would be the 1200, which is just 1,000 above the field elevation. Um, our weather frequency is going to be, uh, looks like 20, uh, 120.15. They do have a clearance delivery frequency at this airport. Oh, it's 119.75, 119.75. Uh, the ground is 121.9. Tower is 119.5. The flight service station frequency in the Columbia area 
So they have a VOR in Columbia. It's in blue, so I look for the blue box information that goes with it, and it says that it's Anderson Radio still, and it's 122.1 with the R. So I can put that in there, 122.1 with the R. And then we had explained what the R means in a prior video, so I won't go through and explain that again. And then we have the Columbia Approach Frequency. Looks like it's going to be, they give us two different frequencies. So it's saying that if we're arriving from somewhere between 110 degrees to 289 degrees, we should contact them or expect to contact them on 124.15. If we're arriving somewhere between 290 degrees to 109 degrees, we should expect to use them on 133.4. We are arriving in this location, so we will expect 133.4. Now also, on the sectional chart for Class C airspaces, they put these white boxes on here, and it's telling us to please call them about 20 miles out, and this is the frequency you'll expect, which also shows us that it's frequency 133.4. See, if we were coming in from the southern area, then it's reminding us to please contact them about 20 miles out, and then you would use the frequency 124.15. Okay. We don't really need the CTAF, and again, flight watch has been discontinued. The last thing we want to do is, now that we have our entire flight plan made out, is we can call the flight service station on the 1-800-WX-BRIEF and file our flight plan. So we can fill this out. We have VFR, and our aircraft is November 870 Sierra Papa. Our aircraft type is a C-172 and it says slant special equipment. Well, we have GPS, so we'll put a slant G. The true airspeed, we said we were gonna use 105 for this flight. Departure point will be golf mic uniform. The time, we expect to depart at 1800 Zulu. The cruising altitude is 5,500. The route of flight is just direct. So we can write this quick symbol to mean direct if we want, or we can write the word direct out, it doesn't matter. The destination is going to be Charlie Alpha Echo. And we expect basically one hour and zero minutes in route. Could I have put 56 minutes? Sure. But one hour, we're just kind of rounding it, and I'm sure that'll work out just fine for us in the flight service station. A remarks, maybe we want to write something like training flight or student pilot if I'm going by myself. So remarks, it's your discretion. Fuel on board, they want the total fuel on board. So you may say, well, how much fuel is that? We can either go to the performance charts or we could use the back side, uh, the calculator side of our E6B. We know that we're going to burn uh, 90, or sorry, 9 gallons per hour, and we have a total of 53 gallons. So this is set on my 9 gallons per hour. And where is 53? So 53, here's 50, 55 gallons, so 53 gallons is here. And I'm going to go to the hours because that's a lot of fuel. So it looks like 5 hours, 6 hours. So it looks like we probably have 5 hours and 45 minutes on board. It would be pretty close. So 5 hours and 45 minutes. Okay, alternate airports. Uh, we don't want to list anything. We don't need that for VFR. And then we write in the pilot's name and phone number, and then the number of souls on board. And let's say we're going to be a total of three people. And then they also want to know um, where is the aircraft based. Actually, that goes in number 14. So they want to know that the aircraft is where it's based would be GMU. And then down here, it says color of aircraft. So the color of the aircraft is the dominant color first, which is white, and then any stripes or markings or anything on the airplane you list. So it has a red and orange. All right, now we have this filled out. We're ready to call the flight service station, so we'll dial them up, 1-800-WX-BRIEF. 
Find us flight service. Hi, we'd like to file a VFR flight. Okay, go ahead with the information. Okay, and so we just read out what we wrote in. They have the same form. They know the format and which order it's coming, so we just read the, the fill in the blanks, basically. All right, flight service station, this will be a VFR flight, November 8700 Papa, C172 Slant Golf, 105 Golf Mike Uniform, 1800 Zulu, 5500 Direct, Charlie Alpha Echo, one hour zero minutes, student pilot, or I could say training flight, five hours 45 minutes, no alternates, my, I'd give my name and my telephone number, we're based at Golf Mike Uniform, three souls on board, the color of the aircraft is white with red and orange.